Hi, it's Rohit again. I'm still a backend engineer at Swim. Today, we'll be walking through the To-Do List app, which is a simple but informative sample application that was written by Scott Clark, a front-end engineer at Swim. I already have Java and IntelliJ installed on this machine. I also have a local Gradle distribution as my primary build tool. But I'll go through the steps today in a way that doesn't assume that I already have Gradle. First things first, let's clone the repository. This is the to-do list repo under the Swim OS organization. Cool, this repo has both server and UI subfolders. Let's work with the server piece first. I'll be bringing up IntelliJ as my IDE, and it's definitely overkill for such a small app. If you're following along, a basic ed editor will be more than enough. We can import the project using the build.gradle file. Notice that I'm delegating to the wrapper instead of my local Gradle distribution, and we're going to need Java 9 or higher. Now that our IDE has been set up, I'll walk through the server side code. There really isn't much of it, but it can be tricky to follow if you're unfamiliar with Swim development patterns. All you really need to know is that the goal of every Swim server is to provide streaming APIs. Building these APIs follows an object-oriented model with three components web agents, lanes, and planes. Web agents are analogous to objects. Lanes within web agents are analogous to fields within objects. And planes are analogous to a scope and runtime. And every single one of these components has access to customizable lifecycle callback functions. These act as methods which can complete our object-oriented model. How would we model a to-do list as a classic Java object? Well, each instant would probably track its items in some sort of collection, and we need to support adding items and removing items from each instance. This list agent class does exactly that. We have a map lane called list, which stores the entries of our to-do list. And we have command lanes, one for adding, one for removing. These command lanes don't actually store any values in them, but their on-command callback functions provide the ways to manipulate our to-do list. One more thing to note here is that lanes themselves are the streaming API endpoints. A client can connect to the list lane, and it will be able to see all of the updates that happen to that lane. The same goes for the two command lanes and that the client will be able to see the values with which they were commanded. The three swim lane annotations that you see here identify one of three pieces which clients will use to identify um, a fully qualified lane. This piece is called the lane URI. And even though lanes themselves are the API endpoints, we address them in relation to their containing web agent. The web agent part is the second part of our fully qualified URI, and we call that the node URI. Um, knowing this, we can finally jump into our plane implementation. We are now in the to-do plane class. Um, as you can see, it's very short, but it's also doing a few important things. Importantly, we identify the UI the URI patterns for which um, we can identify list agents. We only have one agent type here, the list agent, but we have two different kinds of routes that identify a list agent. If a swim server that's loaded with this plane receives a request for the URI to do, the node URI to do, I should say, it will route it to an instance of a list agent that is addressable by that to-do URI if one such agent does not exist. Here, we're identifying the URI patterns that identify specific kinds of web agents. We only have one kind of web agent type here, but we can still showcase how one could make a singleton web agent as opposed to a web agent that can have as many instances as you want. If the node URI pattern looks like just to do, 
with no dynamic components, which are prefixed by this colon, then it becomes a singleton. If you instead have a dynamic component in the URI, you can have as many instances as you want. And concrete examples in this case would look something like to do one or to do my list, as opposed to just to do. Finally, this main method here is complete boilerplate, um, provided that you have a properly configured server.recon file. Um, this is also like pretty boilerplate-y, and the pattern in on how to adjust this for your own customized app should be pretty obvious. That's really it as far as server-type code goes, so we'll be moving on to the UI next. I'm now going to open the JavaScript file that drives most of the Swim application's UI. Over here, let's focus on the data communication piece that talks to the server. Um, you'll notice this global variable called list items, which is really a list object that is populated by the server. The way we talk to the server is wholly determined by this downlink that we create right here. Um, a downlink map, or well, rather a map downlink, issued by the function called downlink map, is what communicates to a map lane, which is the type of lane that we saw on the server. Notice that we identify the lane URI called list and a node URI, which is defined earlier in the function. We can use either the singleton pattern or the dynamic pattern, and it defaults to the singleton. On every update callback, we add a new value to our global list of items, and we re-render the list. On every remove callback, we redraw the list with the item gone, with the item that got removed gone. And really, that's all there is to the UI. We have a single subscription to the map that exists on the server, and we can listen for any updates that happen to it, and we can listen for any removes that happen to it as well. So we have the listener part of the problem in place with our downlink, but the one there is one more piece, and that's um, actually issuing adds and removes. Remember our command lanes from before, one called add list item and one called remove list item. Commands exist as a client call as well. So we can simply call command against our reference to the swim to the swim server through our swim client. Similarly, we can issue removes. Adds and removes follow almost identically. Only difference is the lane URI of the lane that we want to trigger. Let's go ahead and run everything and prove that it all works. So I'm going to go ahead into the server and do a great old W run. Okay, you'll notice that we have logging from our server. I'm now going to go ahead and point a UI to localhost 9001. Cool, we now have a to-do list. Let's go ahead and add some items to it. If I go to the same site in a new tab, I will see the items I added. I can remove from this one, and I will see everything gone from the other tab as well. Everything seems to be working. That's all for this demo.